and we keep putting off stuff because we don't have no self-control. We don't have no I'm preaching up in this house. We don't have no temperance. We don't have no temperance. Temperance is self-control. And it's one of the things that's in the Holy Ghost. It's one of the fruits of the Spirit. It is self-control. Temperance. Learning how to control self. Let's all be honest. We inject because we don't know how to control self. We max out credit cards because we don't know how to control self. And God can't release to you millions if you can't handle hundreds. Ooh, I'm preaching it here. We got to hold it all. Open up the windows of heaven. Pour me out a blessing that I can't receive. Why? So you can blow it. Why? What, what kind of plan do you have for a million dollars? What kind of plan do you have for... <laughs> For a thousand dollars, most of us, if we get a thousand dollars, we got to pay our bills, am I right? So a thousand dollars wouldn't even help us now, would it? Come on, y'all. thousand dollars, but we sure like to get it. I mean, I ain't, I ain't saying don't give it to me, love. But, but a thousand dollars won't bring us out of debt. Many of us, ten thousand won't bring us out of debt. We're, we're in debt up, up, up to it. Come on, y'all. We need to get a plan. This is what I'm going to teach on Wednesday. You need to get a plan because you can't reach a goal until you set a plan. When you set a plan, you stick to your plan till your goal is reached. That's what God said about you. Did you know that God had a plan for you? He said in Jeremiah 29 11, I know the thoughts uh, that I think toward you, thoughts of evil, not peace, to bring you to an expected end. God has a plan for you. And how many know he'll get you there if you help him out? Somebody say, help us, Lord. Flesh is a mess. He said, I'll give you thoughts of peace and not eat. What did I say? Oh, I had a doctor say. Thoughts of peace and not evil. To bring you to an expected end. The enemy has thoughts of evil, not peace. But the Lord has thoughts of peace, not evil. In fact, he wants you to enter into his rest. So that you don't have to worry about what you're going through. Can we say help us, Lord? Everybody shout with me, flesh is a mess. But it can be defeated. I'm not going to leave you here just saying flesh is a mess. It can be overcome. It can be put in subjection. Here's our thing, y'all. We're fighting each other when we need to be fighting flesh. Paul said, I beat my flesh. We want to beat each other, don't we? Get mad at each other. We want to fight each other. Paul said in 1 Corinthians 9, 27, he said, I beat this flesh. In other words, Paul was saying, I'm not underestimating the power of my flesh. So I have to beat it. I have to kill it and I have to kill it on a daily basis. That's why God gave you a cross. He said, if any man would follow me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and do what? How many know the cross is for your flesh? And every day your flesh has got to be crucified or it's going to cause you major problems. Am I in the house? Y'all come on here. So we got to learn how to kill this flesh because it ain't going nowhere. So we got to kill it on a daily basis because today we can kill it, but tomorrow it's going to come back alive. So you got to kill it on a daily basis. And how many know you ain't going to kill it reading the newspaper? You ain't going to kill it reading days of, or watching days of our life. Flat and flat with what they showing on these souls now. Y'all heard me say it. Used to be a time where they didn't show all this stuff. Come on, who remember Dick Van Dyke? Y'all remember that slave? You are too young. You remember Dick Van Dyke? All right, his wife and him, they were married. But when they went to the bedroom, they had two beds. Now that's a little extreme, but I, I understand what they were trying to project. They had Dick Van Dyke sleeping in one bed and Mary Tyler Moore sleeping in the other bed. 
although they were married. But what they were doing was keeping the sanctity. Keeping it, keeping it right, keeping it safe to watch. Even if you put me on the, in the same bed, don't have me doing stuff I ain't got no business watching. See, now TV is geared to get your flesh excited. Movies are geared to get your flesh excited. When the, when the Bible talks about cutting off your right hand and your left hand, it ain't talking about literally cutting off your right hand or left hand, but it's talking about getting rid of stuff that make your flesh act up. And see, this is the way you got to get to the point, what's more important, that movie or my flesh? What's more important, what I see or what I feel? See, because I understand something, and I never saw this before until I read it the other day, Galatians 5 and 17, that the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit lusted against the flesh, and the two are contrary to one another, so that you can't do what you normally would. We all know that, right? Here's what I didn't see in that scripture. I've been reading it for years. I never saw this in this scripture. That that can be both positive and negative. In other words, if your flesh is winning, how many know you can't do what you normally would do in the spirit? If flesh is winning and if you're feeding flesh, the things of the spirit lay dark. But if you're feeding the spirit man, how many know you won't do what flesh want to do? So it comes to the question, who's winning in your life? What's winning in your life? Is it the flesh or the spirit? What are you catering to? Oh, y'all ain't saying that now. The flesh or the spirit? What's getting paid more attention to? The natural man or the spirit man? Because you are a combination of both the natural man and the spirit man. And the one, my, my sister said it like this, the one you feed the most, that's the one that's going to win. And let's all be honest, we, we sure enough feeding that flesh. That's why we got attitudes. That's why I can miss church and it don't bother me. That's why when you call prayer, I'll be there later. That's why on Sunday morning, some of y'all don't let go of that bed. Until I just got to do it. Why? Because I got to go to work every, every, every day. So I'm going to take one day. <laughs> My wife said it the other day and I agree with her. Seems like Sunday morning is the best sleep. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I do know what it is. We just, we just want to curl up for what? 15 more minutes, huh? Yes, yes, yes. I just 15 more. Thank God for the snooze button. When it go out, just 15 more. Click. But how do you know that 15 look like a minute? Because it's ringing again. Then, 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 you said, just 15 more. <laughs> Gee, hit that snooze button. And next thing you know, it's a quarter to left. Church started at 11. You in fast motion, come on here, trying to get to church when you don't do that for work now. See, <laughs> see, pastor can't fire y'all for being late. But I mean, on your job will. So what you do is you do whatever is necessary to make sure you get to work on time. Because that's important to you. Well, if the job is important to you, how many know God ought to be important to you? Enough to show up and have an excitement when you get here. Somebody give God a praise. Somebody said, help us out, Pastor. Am I helping anybody today? Flesh is a what? It don't want to die. You got to kill it every day. And here's the thing, y'all, and I'm almost through. Isaiah 55 and 2 says, Wherefore do you spend money? For that which satisfieth not. Why are you spending money for stuff that don't bring you satisfaction. I tell you, any of y'all got kids like that?